should it should be working. Yeah. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Okay, so I'll just stand here if that's all right, because then I can see all of you. Good evening, Kiora. Uh, it's a real, real, uh, it's wonderful to be back in Wellington and uh, great pleasure to be with all of you. Thank you so much for being here and great pleasure to be with my friend, former Prime Minister and OGP Ambassador Helen Clark. Just really lovely to be here. Let me share some remarks from a global perspective and close with some thoughts on New Zealand. So globally, we are witnessing and confronting unprecedented threats to democracy today. Freedom House reports 15 consecutive years of decline in democracy and civil liberties. An astonishing two thirds of the world's population today live in countries that are non-democratic or where democracy is backsliding. We are witnessing a menacing rise of authoritarian leaders undermining democracy, of which Russia's invasion of Ukraine is only the most egregious. As we join forces against these external threats, we must also tackle internal threats to democracy, which stem from plummeting citizens' trust in government as measured by the Edelman bar barometer. In too many countries, citizens perceive their governments to be disconnected and unresponsive or corrupt and captured by special interests. It is this citizen distrust that populists have stoked to rise to power, spread disinformation, and then undermine democratic institutions. But over the same period, the Open Government Partnership, for which I serve as CEO, which was launched in, at the United Nations in 2011, has grown into a major global platform with 75 countries, over 100 local governments, and thousands of civil society organizations who have together implemented over 5,000 reforms. Through these, courageous reformers across OGP are pushing back and renewing democracy by advancing four clusters of reforms. The first cluster, OGP reformers are opening up opaque public systems to build trust with citizens in key areas that may be useful for New Zealand's reform efforts. So for instance, 70 OGP governments from Argentina to Ukraine are disclosing procurement contracts, which Barbara just talked about, often in open data standards to end backroom deals. 30 OGP countries, such as Slovakia and the UK, are publishing registers to end anonymous companies that stash illicit wealth, evade taxes, and prop up autocrats undermining democracy behind shell companies. As you grapple with the lobbying scandal here, you can draw upon the experience of 20 OGP uh, members, such as Chile, Ireland, and Madrid, that have been advancing lobbying transparency through registers which allow citizens to monitor meetings and donations between lobbyists and public officials. So that's the first cluster. The second cluster is reformers are empowering citizens to shape policies that impact their lives, such as climate. So through its OGP action plan, France is strengthening citizens' participation in the design of its energy and climate strategy. Amidst increasing polarization that we see in all our societies, citizens' assemblies across OGP are forging shared solutions on contentious policies, such as same-sex marriage in Ireland, or climate change in Scotland, or the treaty-based citizen assembly in Pororua in New Zealand that I'm sure Helmut will talk about. The third cluster of reforms is 
tackling systemic inequalities by empowering women, such as addressing the gender wage gap in Jalisco, Mexico, or empowering historically marginalized indigenous community in Costa Rica through OGP's co-creation platform. And the fourth, plat fourth cluster is tackling digital threats, such as disinformation and illegal surveillance. To curb disinformation, Canada, through its OGP action plan, is strengthening the transparency of online political campaigns. France and New Zealand are improving the transparency of algorithmic decision making. So these four clusters of reforms are empowering citizens to shape and oversee their governments every day, not just once in a few years when we cast our vote. So we call this democracy beyond the ballot box. And we must scale up these reforms worldwide as bulwarks of our democratic institutions under assault. And New Zealand can have a vital role in this. I have traveled long and far here in New Zealand because of the precious promise New Zealand holds for our partnership and also for what the partnership can do for New Zealand. As Barbara said, New Zealand is first in the Economist's Democracy Index, second in Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index. At our next global summit of OGP in September, to be hosted by the Estonian Prime Minister, we are aiming to convene and coalesce a global coalition of nations and leaders that are renewing democracy, forging a countervailing force against the rise of authoritarianism. New Zealand has the international credibility to be a co-leader in this global coalition. So please join us in Estonia. But you know, the flip side of a strong international reputation is the risk of complacency. And I'm sure you're all here precisely to fight that complacency by, for instance, ensuring that groundbreaking laws such as freedom of information enacted decades ago in New Zealand remain fit for purpose, or that we tackle emerging threats in New, Ze New Zealand from lobbying or disinformation or foreign interference where some OGP peers have a, have a head start. It is vital that New Zealand has decided to reform its multi-stakeholder forum. We have credible, compelling evidence from 10 years of OGP that robust and equal government and civil society collaboration, underpinned by strong leadership commitment and adequate resources, leads to ambitious reforms and strong results. So in closing, amidst the gloom and doom of war, amidst the gloom and doom of war and the rise of authoritarianism, I'm traveling around the world to ignite more and more bright lights of democracy and openness. I hope you will all join us. I hope you will all partake of our invitation to shine a bright light in our partnership and travel with us in this important journey to renew democracy here and around the world. Thank you.